I'm Dan, and I recently did some DIY acoustic treatment, and uh, I made these bait straps behind me, and I mounted all these panels on the walls and the ceiling. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it all. So I'm about to draw up a rough plan of the way that I built these boxes, uh, the timber frames. Basically I'll put the dimensions, what I've put in here, so the entire width of it is 1160 in millimetres, the whole thing is in millimetres, 1160 wide by 430 deep, and you basically make your height the way I designed them, because I've got a 2.7 metre high roof, so if you have that, uh, you figure out whatever half of that is. I didn't it didn't end up making it exactly half because uh, I had a few different designs I was going through and the fabric wasn't going to work out with what I had. So I decided to make two different heights, but they're all the same in the length and the depth. So basically, these dimensions are the exact dimensions for the Nowth earth wall that you get from Bunnings. Um, so it's the uh, earth wall ceiling bats, 195 millimeters, 1160 by 430 millimeters. So basically, the frame is built to the exact dimensions of those ceiling bats. And once you've built your timber frames, you'll have your uh, ceiling bats that'll be piled up one on top of the other all the way up to the top and once you've filled them all the way up you're gonna wrap fabric around the entire perimeter and you're going to attach a piece of 3mm MDF board on the top and on the bottom to hold it all together and that's basically the design I've got in a nutshell I'll uh, talk you through the entire process. So I just want to show you this uh, handy website I came across. Uh, it's called cutlistoptimizer.com. Um, so with that, you can basically just put in your measurements, what you come up with. These are all the measurements that I've got. Um, you put them all in there and you put your lengths of, of your wood. So I knew that I had 2.7 meter lengths of wood. Um, so you basically, you put in your dimensions. Um, so those were my heights. That was my width and that was my depth. And you just put the quantity in there. So this is all what I needed to make mine. They were 2.74 meters high uh, to the exact including the MDF panels on the ends. Um, and you basically just put all that in, put the amount of lengths, and what you do here is you put um, a higher quantity than what you would expect to be using, and then it will just automatically calculate uh, how much you'll need out of that. And it goes through each dimension here. As you can see, it lays it all out every single length of wood and each dimension that can be cut out of it. So it's much easier to calculate uh, your wastage and so you're not basically wasting so much wood. Once you've got all your dimensions, you know what wood you want, pick out your wood and you go down the back. They've got a cut shop there. Well, most Bunnings should have them. Make sure that you find one that does, unless you've uh, got a saw at home and you like doing a bit of cutting but um I went I did I got mine done at Bunnings it was I think it was about 50 cents a cut after all I think I got about 44 meters worth of wood got it all cut up to size and it only cost me $159 so that was yeah 
pretty fair price for that. Save you a lot of time because they, they get done pretty quick there. And I'll just uh, talk quickly about the fabric that I'm using as well. Um, so basically you just, obviously you need your fabric to be, so what I, what I came up with was 3.2 metres around the perimeter, which will give it enough to have a bit of overlap. So you'll, you'll go all the way around and you know, have a bit of overlap at the back. So you also just need to make sure that uh, when you select your fabric that your width of fabric, so the width is gonna be this way. It's gonna be wrapped all the way around it. So you make sure obviously that your width is uh, a bit longer than the actual height. So let's say you've got a 2.4 meter high roof. You're gonna make these about 1.2 meters. Uh, make sure that you measure your roof first because you've got your ceiling cornices and you won't be able to fit the panels all the way into the corners. So make sure you measure that first. But I'm just telling you that as a rough dimension, let's say you've got 1200 high times two is 2400, so you'll stack one on top of it. Anyway, so you make sure your fabric's 1250, so that you've got 25 mil to staple down around the top here and on the bottom. Uh, so what I did, I had one of my panels was 1430 high, and I had the fabric that I got was 1480 so yeah that left me about 50 millimeters and that was just a good amount to enable me to staple them down evenly and securely all the way around the top and the bottom so I'm just going to go over the list of all of the uh, equipment that you'll need to buy and uh, calculate it all up so you've got uh, some angle brackets here you've got a 12 pack three of those 3780 uh, you've got your earth wool 159 a pack for 18 of those you get three of them now uh, I needed three of those because I've got 2.7 meter high roofs you may get away with two of those if you've only got 2.4 meter high roofs see how you go uh, I've got some PVA wood glue I've got some countersunk chipboard screws uh, so those are the 20 mil ones uh, those are for the tops and the bottoms to put the MDF on so I've got a pack of uh, two 100 packs of those so about 200 you may not need to use all of those but you'll probably need more than 100 and then you've got your 60 mil screws so those will be going into your 35 mil uh, thickness sides of your wood uh, two packs of 50 of them So 100 of those you should need about 64 of those for four panels and Then you've got your 100 mil screws and those are for your 70 mil thickness um, And you'll need two packs of 50 of those as well and again, it'll, it'll uh, probably be about 64 screws that you'll be needing all of those things from Bunning has come to 240 so I'll put that in there 240 and 64 cents uh, plus we've also got the fabric from Spotlight so we've got 13 meters worth of fabric which is $77.87 uh, that, that's the shipping price up there so ignore that so I'll put that in there plus 77 and 87 the timber was 18 pieces at $6.17 so 2.7 meter lengths 18 of them $6.17 per per length um, then I've got the timber service charges so I paid for the cutting the total amount I paid for the cutting was $16 and the total amount Overall for the wood plus cutting was $159 and that's all that's everything from Bunnings
then the cost of your wood was 159 and that's the total cost that I've come up with so 477 51 cents and that is for four really big really tall base traps so 2.7 meters high worth of uh, material and 430 millimeters thick so I think that's really quite reasonable so before I uh, go into the construction of the base traps I'm going to talk a little bit about the design and what materials I've used and why I've decided to make them so thick so I'm going to show you a couple of websites do a few different calculations and comparisons I'm just going to talk a little bit about how you would uh, calculate the effectiveness of your base traps and your acoustic panels so this here is the porous absorption calculator now what you can do with this you just put in two figures you've got your thickness and your gas flow resistivity um, so these figures I've put in here are the figures for the uh, Owens Corning 703 which is the industry standard um, material fiberglass that's used uh, most commonly in professional recording studios so I just wanted to compare my panels up against these so now the material that I've used is the now for earth wall this is the one that I've used here 195 mil um, and as I've explained it's basically 430 millimeters thick uh, because it's laid down flat the Gas flow resistivity figures were not uh, published on their website or any of their data sheets, so I contacted them and they gave me this figure. And that, that's what I need to put into the calculator. So if I then go put that into my calculator, I can figure out what it is. This blue line here is the Owens Corning uh, 703. So we're basically putting the same amount of thickness of material with an air gap of 300 mil, which is roughly what you'll get if you build these panels and then you put them diagonally across the corners. And uh, this is basically this green line here. We'll calculate that. That'll be the noise reduction coefficient of my base traps. That's basically what you get when you put those two figures in you get the noise reduction coefficient which is what you get uh, by this chart here there we go so a number of one basically means it will absorb any sound at that frequency so it's basically the higher up the more effective the absorption is and it's basically just goes through the frequencies so 20 hertz is like all your bass, your very low bass frequency sounds and 20,000 hertz is your very high frequency sounds like your hi-hats. Yeah, this will basically it shows you how these panels will perform at each different frequency. Now, as you can see, uh, my panels in the green they're performing exceptionally better all the way up to three four thousand Hertz um, but the things what you really what are really impressive are how well it performs at even a hundred Hertz and below so even when you get down to 50 Hertz you've got still a noise reduction coefficient of just about 0.7 at 50 hertz and that's really quite hard to achieve unless you've got a big thickness big air gap so this is basically why i designed these panels this way why they're so thick and so big uh, because they really do absorb a lot more of those lower frequencies so you may be uh, wondering exactly why there's so much of a difference in the performance in these two materials um, so obviously they're both the same thickness 
but the main difference is the gas flow resistivity. So the higher the resistivity, the more dense the material is. Um, so the material that I've used is uh, sealing bat. So it's a uh, very, very fluffy and light material. Um, whereas the OC703 is a, a rigid fiberglass. So um, it's a lot more densely packed material. Basically from all the research I've been doing, I figured out that if, you, if you're building a, a very thick panel, what you want to do is have a lower gas flow resistivity. And if you, if you can't build a very thick panel and you've only got about four to six inches to play with, you're better off using a higher gas flow resistivity. But the best results you're going to get is when you can actually afford the space to build a uh, nice thick panel with a lower gas flow resistivity material uh, like the fluffy ceiling bats that I've used. Uh, they're nice and light and fluffy. Basically having that a lower, lower density with a higher thickness allows more sound to travel through before it gets reflected back into the room. Um, that's really the best way that I can explain why you would be using a less dense material for building thick base traps. At this point in time I'm not looking at actually physically testing my room. I know that you can get a test microphone and uh, test the room acoustics. I know it definitely sounds a lot different like I, I notice one thing I noticed um, is I basically feel like I need to turn my bass up considerably more um, and I think that's due to the bass traps are removing all those room nodes uh, that build up in your corners from your bass. I've noticed, you know, since I have did, did a mix down, uh, since I've got all this acoustic treatment done, I noticed when I went and played it in the car the first time it just sounded great. I'm really quite pleased with just the way that it's actually made my mixes translate better like immediately better on other systems and so i can basically prove from the performance the way that i've noticed the difference in the sound and yeah the way it translates it's definitely improved um i'm sitting in this room talking right now and i can definitely hear everything just sounds really clear there's no echo. Yeah, it really just sounds a lot better. It's definitely worth investing in. So I also just want to talk about the way that I've mounted these uh, side panels and the ceiling panel. Um, you'll notice that I've uh, got some feet up against the walls. What that's doing is creating an air gap. When you have an air gap uh, between the material and the wall, you will get an exceptionally better uh, absorption in the lower frequencies um, that's basically why I've done that and also on the ceiling there you know so the, the panels are 100 millimeters thick and you've got a, around about 100 millimeters worth of air gap uh, those feet are exactly 100 millimeters long I'm just going to show you on the porous absorption calculator what difference that would make uh, whether you have an air gap or not so let's have a look so right here, this is the absorption coefficient of my side panels. Polyester CSR Martini Absorb HD panels that I've bought. Um, so they're 100 millimeters thick and this is basically what you're going to get uh, if you've got a 100 millimeter thick panel just pressed up against the wall with no air gap. This is the effectiveness you're going to get so pretty much when you get down to 100 hertz it's pretty much useless um, point two is really giving you bugger all uh, of absorption so let's see if we then go add 100 mil air gap to that let's see how much better it gets and there we go so that's uh, quite a considerable amount difference uh, simply by just adding an air gap it's definitely worthwhile doing uh, because you're going from 0.2 to about 0.5 if 
So, you know, more than double the effectiveness pretty much at 100 hertz there. So it's definitely worth putting an air gap in there if you can afford to do it or if you've basically got the, the space to do it. Went down to Bunnings, mate, and I bought some earth wool, packed it in the car in the back with the kiddies. <laughs> I'm going to take it home and I'm going to make some bee strip. So this is how I'm putting my frames together. Uh, there's going to be two of these rectangular side panels and then the four panels in the middle that join the two together. So I'm just going to drill some pilot holes uh, for the screws. So I've got a three and a half mil drill bit and I'm going to put two holes and I'm going to stagger them because there's going to be other screws going through the other side. So I'll show you one when it's finished but you just want to leave a bit of a gap in between. Once you've done your pilot holes, just use a larger larger drill bit to do some countersinking so that your screws will fit in there flush with the wood. Just got to be careful that uh, you don't go too deep with those. Just go a couple of mil down. Now let's change out my drill and put in my uh, put in my screws. So I've got 100 mil screws here because the wood I'm using is uh, 70 by 35. So 100 mil is enough to go through the 70. I like to put it on the slow speed just to make sure it doesn't split the wood and it doesn't slip so easily. Drive it in there, put lots of pressure behind it when you're pushing it down so it doesn't slip. And that's that. Now you basically just repeat that for uh, all four corners. Put all your four corners together you'll get a rectangle looking like this. Once you've done your side pieces you'll need to attach your uh, middle joining pieces and this is how I've set it up. So I've got the side piece attached to clamp down to the bench and then I've got one of your middle joining pieces clamped on to the bench underneath and it's just elevated on a chair with a few offcuts of wood. Um, just use whatever you've got to elevate it to the right height. Um, and that'll hold it in place nicely so you can then do your screws and your holes. So once you're all clamped down, I'm just gonna drill a couple of pilot holes and you've got your other two that are going in the sides there. So you just need to stagger them. That's why um, I've left a gap there. So I can put one here and one here. Just, that's one thing to be careful of. So I've got a three and a half mil bit. Just uh, drilling my pilot holes. Now I'm just using the larger drill bit to do a countersink. Just drill down a couple of mil. Now for this one, I've got 75 mil screws because I'm going in the uh, 35 mil thickness. 
So 75 is plenty. You could probably get away with about 50 if you want. Now I'm gonna put it on slow speed and just push it down lots of force on it while you get while you're driving it in so it doesn't slip. That's uh, how you do one of those, and obviously you do the same thing for all the other four corners. Once you've got all your middle joining pieces attached to one of your sides, you can then lay that side down flat and put the other one on top of it, just like this. And then you'll quite easily be able to drill the other holes and fit them and it'll, it'll sit quite nicely in place, just have to hold it quite firmly. Also got some angle brackets just for extra stability. Just put those on the uh, internal corners like that. Uh, I'll probably put a few more on as well, but just uh, showing the progress for now. So you'll notice they're a little bit unstable in between that way when you give them a rock. But if you go from the other end, they're nice and sturdy. So you really only need to put the angle brackets on uh, that side, as you can see. So now that I've got my frames complete, I've uh, screwed on some of the MDF, which is three mil thick, uh, onto the top. And I'm just gonna, I've just put four screws, one on each corner for now. Uh, and I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna start packing it. Alright, so today I'm going to make some base traps with some good old earth wool from Bunnings. First, I've got to get on the safety gear. So this shit can be itchy. Though they say it's not all that itchy, but you never know. Better be safe than sorry. <laughs> All set and ready to cut it open. Now watch this thing expand. <laughs> some frames. Well, I'm pretty impressed with how this has turned out so far. 
So I think it was definitely a good idea to make the frames the exact dimensions of the ceiling bats. So that way they fit in there really nice and snugly. They're not gonna sag and droop down too much. Once they're all packed in there, just go around the edges, tuck any bits in that are sticking out. And once it's all sitting in there nicely, it'll be time to start wrapping them. So the way I'm, I'm gonna approach uh, attaching this fabric is I'm gonna wrap it all the way around. And I'm gonna just start stapling it. So I'll just have it uh, just enough so it's covering over the uh, wood frame there. And I'll just start uh, stapling it on and working my way around. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, start from here and work my way around, pull it nice and tight. So I'll just fold the corner over and staple that down. So I'd recommend using a stool to get up there because uh, they're quite tall and the angle that you put on your wrist is a bit of a strain. So now that we've got that on there, uh, we can now put our top cover on. And I'll throw that on top. Just going to uh, mark out where my staples are so that I don't drill into them. Now I'll start chucking some screws in. Just make sure it's all lined up nicely. So I've just got uh, about 20 or 25 mil screws here. Also I've got my drill on a low speed uh, just to make sure that I don't drill straight through the uh, MDF because it's really thin stuff, it's only three mil, so you could quite easily go straight through it. So now I'm just gonna go around and uh, check that all my screws are sitting flush. Uh, they, they drill into the MDF real nicely. Um, so yeah, if there's any that aren't that are sticking out a bit, we'll get them drilled in nice and flat, just so it's a uh, nice smooth flat surface because we're going to be sitting one on top of the other. Now what I'll do is flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So now we'll just uh, take this one off that was just there to hold the insulation in place. snug fit there and pull that nice and tight now now the other end is uh, in place looking good straps done. So I'll turn it around so you can see the front. There we go, not too shabby. So I just bought myself some of this uh, Martini Absorb acoustic panel. Uh, it's basically just uh, polyester insulation. So this stuff's 100 mil thick by uh, 2.4 by 1.2 meters long and I'm basically using this stuff to treat my first reflection points in my home studio. The first reflection points are on your side walls so I've got some there, one there, one there 
and now I'm putting one up onto the roof and I've got some hooks that I'm putting up. What I've got is these wall mates. I'm using those to screw up into the ceiling as you can see there and then I'm going to screw these ceiling hooks into those and that'll make them much stronger than just using the ceiling hook because um, I was using those up here before and they're a little bit wobbly so that'll uh, help to make it a lot stronger and then once I start putting it up I'll uh, show you the next steps so now I've got all my hooks up in the ceiling so I've got eight ceiling hooks as you can see there and the way I'm going to attach this foam panel to the ceiling is with a trailer net. I've got this trailer net from Bunnings, so it's a large one, so it's it's about 2.4 by 1.8 meters, which should be just right. And I'm just going to wrap that around it and just uh, hook it up around all those hooks. All I did was uh, laid my cargo mat out on the floor and then I laid my acoustic panel on top of that and then uh, just got a few hands to help me and uh, jumped up on the ladder and just started hooking the cargo net up all around as you can see and uh, it's worked out really well I'm really impressed with it that cargo net was perfect size for this panel and uh, yeah it's sitting up there really nicely it's not sagging and it feels very secure I'm quite confident that it's not going to fall down at all and it's uh, sitting up there about 100 mils off so you've got about 100 mil air gap and 100 mil worth of material so that's really ideal that's what you want I've got one laid out here that I'm doing for the other side wall and this is how I did it I've got some um, some furniture legs here these are from Bunnings uh, 100 mil uh, they're really lightweight and I basically just got some velcro stuck it on the back got some heavy duty velcro just to make sure it holds really well for some of them I'm using command strip uh, like the uh, picture frame hangers those velcro ones and for some of the couple of top ones I decided to use actual wall hooks so what I did was I just drilled a hole uh, through the through the base and attached a picture hook to it and then when I put it up there I'm just going to nail that one in just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere you could probably get away with just using these uh, command hooks um, although uh, if you can get away with putting a couple of those hooks in the walls probably better off using these ones just to be safe and then these two are going to be the bottom. I'm just using the command strip for those ones just to hold them in place. And then I've just got a couple that I'm going to put in the middle as well. Uh, for the middle ones, you don't really have to add anything to attach them. It's more just to hop to space it out so it doesn't droop in. Because uh, with this one here, what happened was it was kind of sagging in and flopping around a bit. Um, so now that I've Put a couple of those down the middle it's uh, helping it to uh, keep it nice and straight against the wall um, so yeah I'll just put this one down and the way you want to do this you just want to put it down press it down and then give it a good wiggle to make sure it actually hooks in properly uh, and you can see that holds quite well because um, this stuff's really nice and um, yeah perfect sort of felty sort of material for it and the important thing that you need to do you'll notice there's a soft uh, back on it and there's a hard front so the material on these uh, absorb HD 100s is uh, a lot firmer on one side and a lot uh, squishier on the other side you want to install them in that way that you put your squashy side facing the wall and the firm side facing the room um, that's just how it says to do it in the installation guide and that works in your favor anyway with uh, 
your Velcro because it works better on the softer face. This one here is what it looks like once you've got it up there. You can see down there's an air gap. And yeah, I'm just about done. Once I get this one up there, I'll be uh, pretty much finished with my acoustic treatment. Those three panels I'm putting up uh, for the side and the roof, basically they're going to uh, handle the first reflection points. And that's really all you need for that and it's great and I'm yeah really impressed with this product and I would definitely recommend doing something similar to this if you can get your hands on it. So now that I've got all of my music treatment set up I'd like to give you a little bit of a demo of how things are sounding in here and I think you'll notice quite a bit of a difference just from uh, listening to the recording on my phone. Uh, so we'll do a clap test. And here is my track. Listen to that. I am totally impressed with that result. Uh, the acoustic treatment has been a huge success. Um, I can definitely tell there's so much more control in the sound. The high end just sounds nice and tight. There's, there's no echo. Uh, the bass isn't all boomy. It just sounds incredible and um, a lot better than I even expected it would be. Um, and I, I'm sure you could tell too by listening to that so I don't really think there's much point of actually using a room test measurement microphone uh, because it's quite obvious just listening to that before and after that I recorded on my iPhone uh, that it sounds so much better since doing the acoustic treatment and uh, I really hope that you can follow along everything I've done in this video and set up your own proper acoustic treatment for your own uh, home studio as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.